I'm also thinking of, uh, you know, looking at grassroots development uh, because some of these uh, happenings occurred in communities like the local government, some villages and some other places. And when we talk about governance, most times it doesn't touch on the lives of the grassroots. So grassroots is another key thing here. Uh, you find that, that the cities are usually immune to some of these attacks. So shouldn't we be focusing now on the local government areas in these places? I agree with you. It is not just only in the uh, troubled area that we should do this. Actually, I have always made a statement. The day the local government in Nigeria starts functioning, we made it. Starts functioning. In yes. other words, it's not functioning. I just tell me exactly. Maybe your own local government in Lagos here, well, there's something the local government is doing. I, I'm not aware. I'm not aware. The 779 local governments in Nigeria, what are they doing? But the truth of the case is that we cannot just blame the local government. What resources are available to the local government? And in fact, the one that is very close to me, where I live, I have been there on a number of occasions. In fact, there was a chairman that uh, I tried to see for clearly over nine months, and I never had a chance until uh, she left the police. A council chairman? Away. In Lagos, yeah. Right here in Lagos. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, our problem in terms of local government <laughs> is not just in the troubled area. It's all over. But if we, local government is not functioning anywhere. If we look at what you, you, you highlighted, quite a number of things. You talked about how schools, teachers yes. need to speak about certain things, religion, yeah. parents, yeah. now local governments. But the question will be, if they all have got to function, it's got to be coordinated properly. Yes. And then the question also is that, what is our national approach towards this? Because, yes, we know that the government says by December, maybe the military aspect have got to be handled. Yes. But there's a major other aspect. In fact, the other aspect is bigger. And it's going to take a longer time. It's going to take a longer time. So if and I see something out there, who do they call? How did you ensure that, well, if this information is passed to certain persons, they can match it with certain characteristics they've seen of certain attacks going somewhere, saying maybe this is a signature of a Boko Haram attack? Yeah. It's not going to be that too straight for them to be able to identify. But I, 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 I believe that uh, with a number of the things that we have said now, um, if the local governments are much more active than they are at the moment, it is going to be easier because in the various uh, areas of the country, the local government is the closest to the people. And if the local government is seen as the one championing a number of these things, uh, it's going to sink in very, very easily. But you know that those local governments too, if they have to come up with those kind of information, they need to get something from at the top. I mean, you saw how uh, the states responded with their homeland security. What do we have? Who, which agency is championing this? I don't think there is any agency championing that at the moment. Which is but the key I, question. I believe that uh, the federal government can start thinking in that, direction in that direction to create some of these agencies that are likely to put this in place. Okay, because that question is extremely important. Some people will say we have the Ministry of Interior, and you know, ideally, that should be the. The only thing to remember about that is the aggression and the, the jobs <laughs> that people, people died in. But, yeah. but perhaps, you know, it should be under the, pur the purview of the Ministry of Interior. Because mm -hmm. you made a statement earlier about the military engagement yeah. uh, being, being over in three months. So you believe in that. But at the insurgency itself, you cannot say that it will be over in one year. Uh, the question is, then what exactly do we mean by the military engagement in that area will end in three months? Uh, you see, the military, the military has been involved in uh, degrading the coordination and control of the insurgents. That is why I think for quite some months now you've never heard of uh, anybody taking an area and declaring and hanging flags and things like that. Uh, that ability has been degraded. And in fact, the degradation of that ability is still going on as we are talking here. The operations are still going on. And of course, we have to keep that on. Sorry to button again. You know, well, while you're making this point, well, many would have thought that, just as you talked about the fact that we need to have a coordinated response going together, That's right. many thought, look, 
since we were going about it that particular way, we've had the military say, look, this is not conventional. So what was the strategy? Because now they've spilled into the people. What was the strategy to, if you dislodge them from here, you ensure they don't go in here. But if they've gone into the people now, we're seeing suicide bombings here and there. Was there no strategy on the other part? Um, I, I, I'm not too sure that, uh, because I, I'm not privy to... <laughs> no, just from what you've seen. Uh, yes, I'm not privy to the operational uh, directives that were given to the fighting forces. But I guess that what, must have been, uh, what they must have been told is to ensure that you do not allow anybody to sit in an area and probably declare that it's in control. That, I think, the military has been able to do. But, you see, I think in the, in the news uh, a couple of days ago, I saw pictures on the television as uh, the Air Force was strafing from the air. They, take off, they took off and uh, the ground soldiers were also bombarding them. Definitely. In fact, it's part of the reasons why uh, the president uh, went to uh, Chad Republic, uh -huh. uh, discussed with them in Chad, discussed with them in uh, Niger, discussed with them in Cameroon, uh, to ensure that, you see, because we do not have rigid boundaries between our countries. When they run from here, because of the bombardment they are, they are, they are, they are, they are suffering, uh, they, 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 they will run into the, uh, the next country. And if the forces in the next country are ready, so they will know that they have nowhere to run to. That's one. But within ourselves here, when they are bombarded, they go into the population. And that is why I, I have also uh, said here before that uh, the, the public needs to be educated, and we have said it here even this morning, you know, uh, go, go, to be able to identify and uh, you know, uh, apprehend. Going by your analysis, uh, saying that uh, you strongly believe that uh, the three months given to the Nigerian forces uh, will definitely yield some form of result. But the yeah. problem is with the you know, pockets of bombings here and there carried out by suicide bombers. Shouldn't we also be taking pain as a country to look at our borders and also identify the main ingredients being used to making the bombs? If we can stop the main ingredients from coming in, then we can starve the insurgents from making some of those uh, bombs that people strap around the bodies. I agree, I agree bodies. absolutely with you. I agree with you entirely. But it is not just the military. It's going to be all the forces. The police force will have to go into a lot of work. Yeah, yeah the police, uh, no doubt, the as well as sensitizing the, 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 the public. Because yes. if I know, maybe if you tell me, uh, I watch television and I get to hear that, well, this fertilizer is being used or this amount of chemical can make a bomb, then if you get to maybe see such chemical or perceive it, you can raise an alarm and let the people in on what exactly is happening in your uh, neighborhood. But if you don't know what the what main is. ingredients are yes. for making bombs, mm -hmm. you just might see it somewhere and just walk by. Yes. You see, it's, it's, it's a 50-50 affair. Uh, should the knowledge to make bombs be made uh, open to the public? Maybe, maybe what we should be talking about is identifying the uh, substances that are used, that are put together. Uh, if the police, of course, go after this, wherever they see some of these things, they raise questions. They can invite people for questioning. Whoever that person is, if his intention is to use it for peaceful purposes. Of course, he has nothing to fear. But uh, the moment you are called and you are questioned, the likelihood is that if you have uh, a sinister motive, you're likely to uh, put yourself in check. But that notwithstanding, the police, once they identify a source like that, should not give up. That, that should be somebody that they should continue to watch and watch and watch and watch. because. Even if he pretends not to be doing something right now, at a time that he believes he's not being watched, he can certainly do something. And that is where the danger lies. Okay, so uh, the police clearly uh, have identified that they also have a very big role to play here. Yeah. 
All right, this is our anchor. Thank you very much indeed for coming. And uh, Brigadier General Lushek Majana is a retired military officer. We'll be back and find out what and how can the police be involved in all of this. Don't go away. <laughs>